we have more regions rotating into Earth view with big flare potential, and some fast solar wind is definitely in your future. Those stories and more in the news this week. This space weather forecast is sponsored in part by Millersville University. Come get certified in broadcast space weather. Visit millersville.edu slash swen. Space weather this week is definitely keeping us on our toes. As we take a look at the Earth-facing disk, we've had a lot of active regions in Earth view, including some big flare players. In fact, over this past week, we've had more than 20 radio blackouts being fired from several different regions. The first, the, one of the biggest uh, offenders was region 3156, but it is now rotated to the sun's far side. We're now looking at region 3163, and it's beginning to rotate to the sun's far side. So luckily, all of the activity that we've seen basically around the 14th, 15th, and 16th, uh, all those big radio blackouts are finally beginning to calm down. It definitely affected radio propagation on Earth's day side over those few days. So if we had, uh, if you were we're an HF radio operator, you definitely were noticing it. Things have definitely called de calmed down since then, but region 3169 is still firing big flares, so we're not out of the woods yet. This region has not launched any Earth-directed solar storms, but we have seen a few things go off to the east of Earth. But meanwhile, as far as uh, solar storms are concerned, we do have a couple coronal holes. We have one that is entering the Earth strike zone now and is gonna be sending us some fast solar wind over the next day or two, but we also have smaller pockets that are kind of extended and this means we're not going to have really strong fast solar wind but we are going to have an extended period of it so aurora photographers if you're at high latitudes you definitely could get a bit of a show might even dip into mid latitudes for a short bit but things are going to be much more sporadic so you're going to have to deal with that and kind of catch it as you can but that after that things will calm down in through as, uh, as we get to the last uh, week in december things will definitely settle down but we do still have the potential for solar storm players because we see some activity that's just beginning to rotate into view. Now, as we switch to our stereo image, this is stereo, uh, which is our far-sighted monitor. It's looking at the sun just a tiny bit from the side. You can see those coronal holes that are gonna be rotating into the Earth strike zone here, but you can also see on the sun's east limb, you definitely see there's one active region in the north. This region has yet to rotate fully into Earth view, but man, it's gurgling and burgling looks like it could be yet another big flare player and looks like it could be a solar storm producer so we are keeping our eyes on that because it looks like radio blackouts may not yet be uh, quieting down and we might actually get a chance for some solar storming switching to our moon we are now passing through the new moon phase with the new moon being on the 23rd and by the 27th the moon will still be only about 23 percent illuminated so you night sky watchers, if you happen to miss the Geminids, the Ursid meteor shower will peak on the 22nd into the 23rd, right at the time that there's that new moon. So you have some more chances to catch some beautiful shots. Switching to our solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are anticipating the fast solar wind from that set of coronal holes that's rotating in through the Earth's strike zone over the course of this week. At high latitudes, NOAA is expecting minor storm conditions with up to about a 20% chance of a major storm. And this is going to kind of roll in and out, kind of uh, be sporadically uh, brightening here and there. In fact, after the, the Christmas holiday, we could actually get more brightening because we have, once again, another possibility pocket of fast solar wind coming. So aurora photographers, if you're at high latitudes, you could get a spectacular show, uh, especially with the new moon being on the 22nd and 23rd and the Ursid meteor shower also peaking at that time. So it's a really good time to get some shots. Now, mid latitudes, we're not expecting nearly as much activity, but we do have, a, uh, we are expecting active conditions with up to about a 10 to 15% chance of minor storm conditions. And again, this is gonna be a bit sporadic, so it might be a little bit tough to catch here and there, but you could still get a good chance to get some Aurora if you're a dedicated chaser. And that's a wonderful holiday gift for us all.
Switching to our solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, we do have quite a few active regions on the Earth-facing disk, and some of them do have big flare potential, so you can see all of this is still in yellow. In fact, NOAA is giving us about a 30% chance of M-class flares, and even a small chance of X-class flares over the next few days, although I think the X-class flare risk is pretty, it's a bit overblown. Mainly this is from region 3163, which is rotating to the sun's far side, and then also region 3169 that is showing big flare potential. So we're gonna, GPS users, you're gonna have to stay vigilant, especially near dawn and dusk, because we do have this risk for radio blackouts over the next few days, and it could easily extend through the rest of this week. Now, the one nice thing is that solar flux again remains into the mid tri uh, triple digits. It's definitely going to stay that way because we have so many active regions on the Earth-facing disk and we have more that are rotating into view. So uh, HF uh, radio operators definitely enjoy the decent radio propagation on Earth's day side. This is going to continue and hopefully we're not going to get too many radio blackouts, but if, you get, if we get them, they're going to be reasonably short-lived. At least that's what it looks like thus far. Now, as we take a look at particle radiation. Uh, for radiation storms, we do have a slightly elevated risk right now, and this is as region 3163 rotates off of the sun, what the sun's west limb onto the sun's far side. So if you're a frequent flyer, everything is normal, but just stay vigilant because we could get a radiation storm probably a very low risk of that happening. And then over, of course, the Christmas holiday, everything should settle back down and things should go back to normal. So the space weather this week continues to hold our attention. We have a set of coronal holes that's rotating in through the Earth's strike zone now and sending us some fast solar wind. Aurora photographers, at you're at high latitudes. You definitely could get a nice show, especially around the 22nd and 23rd when we have the new moon and the Earth's meteor shower peaking. At mid-latitudes, well, your aurora photographers could definitely get a show as well, but it's going to be a little bit more sporadic and harder to catch. But we do have a good chance for you to get possibly some great shots. Now, amateur radio operators and emergency responders, well, at least things have calmed down just a little bit for you when it comes to the radio blackouts. We had quite an interesting set of, of uh, days where we had some big solar flares and lots of radio blackouts. Thankfully, that is kind of calming down, but we're not out of the woods yet. We do still have one big flare player on the Earth-facing disk, and we have another one that looks like it's going to be rotating into view over the next few days. So expect a little disruption on the bands here and there, a uh, far cry from this past week. But at least radio propagation on Earth's day side will continue to be good easily through the holidays. Now, uh, GPS users, well, you know, GPS reception should be pretty good, except you do need to pay attention near dawn and near dusk. And when the solar storms uh, begin to, to happen due to that fast solar wind, well, you're going to need to take care anytime you're anywhere near Aurora on Earth's night side. I'm Tamitha Scove, the Space Weather Woman. Thank you for watching.